Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as ourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Mighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. Christ have mercy upon us, Christ have mercy upon us. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed son was led by the spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you. The birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth is with you. As many as, many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is saying in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. I will, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions, Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in the doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimony. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to, de to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, to, Praise you. to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning on this bright, sunny, crisp morning. Perhaps today we should be saying a few extra prayers for our friends who are living in the South, especially in Texas, who are suffering through this cold and uh, a major power outage. So let's uh, remember all those folks in our prayers today. If someone were trying to explain to you about the season of Lent, after all, today is the first Sunday in Lent, and to tell you about how Lent is a time of reflection, a time of repentance, a time of penitence, and a time of sacrifice and self-denial. And if you were hearing this morning's gospel for the very first time and relying on this gospel to explain all of those things about Lent, you might be saying to yourself, well, there doesn't seem to be very much in this morning's gospel about repentance or about penitence, about sacrifice or about self-denial. After all, in this reading from Mark, the word repent is actually only mentioned once and that only near the end of the, of the passage. And it really doesn't seem to be the focus of this morning's reading. Well, you actually have to go back to the verses in Mark just prior to the ones that we read this morning to get the context and the connection. It is there that you will find these words. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the people were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Here now is the connecting reference to the confession of sins, to repentance, and to the forgiveness of sins. In fact, if we don't know about these lines from the earlier verses in Mark, it becomes rather difficult to recognize the stark juxtaposition between our baptism and our baptismal covenant and our need for repentance, and then John's baptism of Jesus, who needs no, who needs no repentance and who ultimately will sacrifice himself for our sins, the ones that we have committed and the ones for which we need to repent. It is only by listening to these previous verses from Mark about what John is preaching, about what John is doing, that we're able to connect the dots to this morning's passage about the baptism of Jesus and the call for us to repent and believe in the good news. We sometimes say the word repentance as if to repent was an easy thing to do. For many of us, that's simply just not the case. Acknowledging our own wrongdoings and repenting takes strength. It takes courage, even in the best of circumstances. And yet repentance is crucial if we are 
to turn ourselves around, to turn ourselves back, to return to a re right relationship with God, to reflect on where we are in life, to be realistic about it, and to be in tune with our own shortcomings, to understand those sins that we have committed as we just said in the general confession in thought and word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. And then our job, of course, is to acknowledge our failures, and to ask for God's forgiveness. While that perhaps is not so easy, it is worth the work and nothing, shame, Reluctance, procrastination, fear, guilt, nothing should stand in the way of our repenting of our sins and seeking God's forgiveness. God loves us, even with all of our shortcomings. Repentance is the work that mends our hearts, that mends our minds, that mends our souls. Repentance is simply put the path to our own renewal. Now, indeed, this is something that we should do, be doing all year round. But the Lenten season is that part of the church year that calls us on, on all of us, more particularly, to, re, to reflect, to engage in honest self-examination, to repent and to perform acts of sacrifice as a symbol of Christ's sacrifice for us by his death for our sins on the hardwood of the cross. However, doesn't it seem like we have been clearly and persistently sacrificing for this last 12 months? The scourge of COVID-19, as just one example, has locked us down, shook us up, and wrung us out. It has affected our lives in ways that we know about and in ways that we may not know about, in ways that could linger for years to come. It has literally changed the way in which we live and may change the way we have to think about living in the future. Even now it has affected nearly 30 million people in this country alone, some of whom were members of our families and our friends. And it has resulted in the death of more than 485,000 people so far in this country, again, some who, of whom were members of our families and our friends. We are people whom we know have lost jobs and are suffering financial hardships because of COVID. We all live in stress and many of us live in real and palpable fear, but we also live in hope. Hope that comes from our continuing connections with one another, our continuing caring for one another, our continuing love for one another, even in this virtual world where we are forced to live. And yet, and yes, hope comes to us in the form of a vaccine. Now let's spend a minute or two talking about the notion of sacrifice and self-denial. I agree with something that Mother Anne told us last week. She said, we've all given up way too much this year. We've all sacrificed more than we ever should have had to and more than we ever dreamed that we would need to. So instead of emphasizing more sacrifice and self-denial in these next few weeks of Lent, let me suggest that we treat this time as a time of being reminded, a time in preparation for what is coming. As Chris Paul said in her Ash Wednesday homily, we spend the period of Advent in preparation and anticipation of what is coming at that time, the birth of the Christ child and all that means for a world dwelling in fear and violence and turmoil. Likewise, can we not use this season of Lent in looking, for the, in looking to the victory 
over the cross that comes with the resurrection. After all, in the preface for Lent that you will hear this morning at the beginning of the Holy Eucharist, we ask God that you bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy, prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that in fervent prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. This prayer suggests that Lent is not just a season of penitence and sacrifice, but also a season of joyful preparation and an opportunity for renewal. Joyful preparation in the realization that the cross is not the end, not nearly the end. There's the hope of the resurrection yet to come. Dare I say that instead of putting the usual priority that we normally do on sacrifice and self-denial during the season of Lent, we instead offer prayers <clears throat> of thanksgiving that God chose the way of love, that God chose the way of love in the triumphal resurrection of his son to defeat death and to defeat fear and to defeat violence. God shows the way of selfless love, the way that gives us hope. Perhaps we can re-envision sacrifice this year as the triune God's kind of self-donation of God's self through his son for the good of us all and be thankful for the possibility of our own redemption through Jesus' resurrection. Maybe. We should use this Lenten season not in just focusing on acts of sacrifice and self-denial, but in focusing on prayers of self-reflection in prayers of thanksgiving for the hope that comes to us in the resurrection and in prayers for, the re for our own renewal to help us open up a way for God to step more fully into our lives, to re-energize us in our hearts and in our minds and in our bodies and in our spirits and in our souls to re-energize us to achieve a greater connection with God, to turn ourselves away from those things which alienate us from God and toward those things that bring us to a closer, to a right relationship with God, which after all coming full circle is what the word repentance means to turn back to God. In the troubled times we seem to be living, it is looking to the hope of the resurrection, looking to the hope of renewal. That is the good news of the Lenten season. Repent, says Jesus, and believe in the good news. Amen. Now let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people form one. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and the orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families. Kristen Paul, John Pfeiffer, Lee and Winnie Radford, and Ashley and Sean Reagan. We offer prayers for our frontline workers during this COVID-19 crisis. Michelle, Beverly Ann, Vic, Allison, Catherine, Anna, Carl, Victoria, Victor, Brandy, Joey, Jimmy, Kendall, Mark, Robin, Brian, Amelia, Josh, Adam, Sarah, Sarah, Tori, Caitlin, John, Michelle, Ben, Barrett, Melanie, Jennifer, Caitlin, Kay, Joseph, Amy, Becca, Brittany, Mike, Aiden, Kathy, and Nicole. We are prepared for our military and their families. Anthony, Lucas, Anna Marie, Chandler, Vincent, Brian, Jerome, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Mike, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, and Luke. And we offer prayers for our college students, Ben, 
Martha, Zach, Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Anna, Joshua, JT, Lydia, Ashley, and Joe. And now we pray the prayer for Trinity together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, dear friends. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, just a couple of brief announcements. Um, pay attention to, or closer attention to tidbits over the next week or so. Um, tomorrow night is our vestry meeting and uh, we're gonna be discussing uh, a process for regathering and in-person worship. Uh, the diocese has informed us that they expect to allow us, say expect to allow us, to start the regathering process indoors on March 7th. So that's in two weeks. Um, when that happens, if that actually happens, we will begin with an 8 a.m. service as we did in November. Beyond that, we need to figure out what this 10 o'clock is gonna look like. We've had a vision um, but we had a uh, clergy, me clergy diocesan meeting with the bishops and bishop staff this past week. And there are some very strict requirements for us regathering in person, including not only maintaining the six foot um, social distancing and not only masking, but double masking or an N95 mask because of the new variants to COVID-19. So we need to have a serious conversation about that. We will be having that conversation in the vestry tomorrow night to figure out how we want to approach this. Um, and we'll have announcements and tidbits. So just keep an eye on that. And if you have questions, just reach out to me or to Frank, and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, also, you should, I'm, I'm sure that many of you are aware that the schools are gonna start reopening in some format in March. So we do wanna start collecting for backpack blessings again, um, food donations again, um, not just for backpack blessings, but for other um, uh, charities that we support that uh, donate food during this time. And in particular, I wanna highlight this week's tidbits where we talked about the Baltimore Area Aftercare Program. This is a um, organization founded and started by uh, Brother Les, um, he had a long history of prison ministry prior to coming to Maryland and has uh, carried over his program from Virginia into Maryland. Um, I sit on that board um, as well, and as to a couple of other clergy in the diocese. And Brother Les is looking for support. A, sign -up, a link to a sign-up genius to specific needs went out in this week's tidbits. Um, they're also looking for gift cards um, and, and those types of things. Um, personal care items and such. So if you could take a look at that link and considering consider donating to, we call it BAP for short because Baltimore Aftercare Program is, um, it's, a, it's a mouthful. So uh, just I just commend that to you to take a look as a source of donations. Are there other announcements that we need to make this morning? All right, I'm not hearing any. Or right. does anybody have a birthday they would like a blessing for? Just it's Elijah's birthday, birthday on Thursday. Yes. Yeah, that's me. Is that what? Is that why Louisa is dressed up? <laughs> sort of. No, no, she just dresses up. But yes, we will have a 12-year-old on Thursday. Mm. Oh, sweet Jesus! That's awesome. <laughs> and today, Eliza, the youngest granddaughter, is one. Oh my goodness, one. Yeah, oh, sweet. Dude, just yesterday she was born. <laughs> so Elijah and Eliza. Okay. That's not I, at all Anthony. a tongue twister. Anthony, is it your birthday? Old man. <laughs> all right, who else we got? We got Anthony, Eliza, and Elijah. I'm not seeing anybody else with hands up. 
Okay. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Elijah, Eliza, and Anthony, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen them to trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. How about wedding anniversaries? What? We have one. <laughs> Who's we? I can't hear. It's uh, Margaret and Jim. Oh, there you are, Margaret. Okay, yeah. great. When is your on, anniversary? On the 26th. On the 26th. All right, it's lovely. 33 years. How many? Oh, my goodness, that's <laughs> phenomenal. Wow. Anyone else? All right, friends, let's pray for Margaret and Jim. Holy God, we thank you for Margaret and Jim and the blessing that they are to our community, to their family and friends. We pray your blessing upon them as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. We pray that you would continue uh, to strengthen their love and their bond, that you would bless them for the wonderful family that they have created and just continue to remind them of all the reasons they were drawn together in the first place. We pray that this year would be one of health, happiness and wholeness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you both. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. All right, Caleb. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of the children of Abraham to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. 
In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he suffered, our Lord Jesus Christ instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So if you have your communion kit, you need to start by turning it upside down like this. So the wine is on the bottom so that you can open the top and take out the bread here. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And then just very carefully remove the lid off of your wine. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. 